Does this castle look familiar? Well, it should. Especially if you're a fan of the movie, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's right. This is Dr. Frankenfurter's castle, where you would find him and Magenta and Columbia and Riff Raff. And we're spending the night here. Now, when I say that we're spending the night here, I really mean it. You see, back whenever they made Rocky Horror Picture Show, this was a derelict mansion. It was fallen into disrepair. And today, it is a pretty swanky hotel, if you ask me. And it cost about 700 American dollars a night to stay here. And if you're a Rocky Horror Picture Show fan, it's pennies. So of course, we are here. We're gonna line up as many shots as we possibly can. And then, you remember in the movie, Riff Raff singing from a certain room? Right there, we're gonna point it out. That's our room tonight. We're gonna to watch Rocky Horror Picture Show inside Riff Raff's room. And you're joining us. As a Rocky Horror Picture Show fan, I don't, I can't believe I didn't know this. You know, whenever you see the house, when you see Frankenfurter's castle, you automatically assume the front door where Riff Raff greets Brad and Janet is on this side of the building, but actually it's not. It's on the back side of the building facing the old Hammer Studios, Bray Studios. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But like I said, we're going to walk around and try to line up as many shots as we possibly can. They filmed here inside the house. We're going to show you what changed. And we're also going to talk a little bit about what they filmed on the set. But here's a quick walk around the property. So you can stay in the main house, which is to your left. And then they have these other like little cottage-like rooms that you can stay. Like this over on the right-hand side. Oh man. Now there's a greenhouse back here. This is, if I'm not mistaken, there was a greenhouse for the movie, but it wasn't this one. I think there's a video of Richard O'Brien talking about how the one that they had whenever they made the movie was just kind of falling apart. Uh, at the end here, we see this conservatory. Well, of course, that's new. That's been built on. The one that we had it was all in tatters, ruins, and um, new buildings here. But at least it's being used. It was falling down. All right, we're going to go in in just a minute. Just a minute. Jessica's just loving this room. I think it's quite fitting that it feels like a storm is rolling in, but I think that's just your typical English weather. And the sun is starting to set, so this is quite amazing. Now, this is the front entrance. We're gonna walk through the house, and like I said, when you see it, you're gonna lose your mind. But walking around the gardens and the ground itself, there is a video online of Richard O'Brien standing, pretty much right where Jessica's standing, playing the acoustic guitar. He's playing an acoustic, edition of the song Superheroes. And you have to remember that Richard O'Brien basically wrote all of, you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show and Shock Treatment. I've done a lot God knows I've tried To find the truth I've even lied But all I know Is down inside I'm bleeding And he's talking, this is the end of the video, he was given like a tour. And he mentions that there was a giant dome on top of the house right about there. And that was supposed to be Frankenfurter's lab. It wasn't originally part of the house. And he points it out. Oh man, like I'm, I got goosebumps. Now we're not the first people to come here to Oakley Court and document the Rocky Horror Picture Show filming locations, but I, I feel like everybody who's come here, they just kind of walk around the property. Nobody takes the time to go inside, spend the night, and just do the movie justice. Now, Jessica and I, we're a little crazy when it comes time to filming locations, and there's one part of the movie that most people don't really talk about, and that is the wedding of Ralph and Betty Hapshat. Now, supposedly, 
There was an interview with one of the producers, like the set designers, who said that they built the church. Well, this is funny. Let me strike that, reverse it. <laughs> See what I did there? Willy Wonka. He says whenever they were building the church for the movie, they wanted an American church. And in his mind, the stereotypical church was a white church. And there's nothing like that here in England. So they decided to build it. We wanted to place it very firmly in uh, kind of middle America. I mean, not that I knew what middle America was, except that I knew that they had kind of nice white churches. And we built that just outside of, uh, in fact, that was in a paddock opposite the, um, opposite the house and just down from the studio. And all it was really was just the facade of that church. Now Bray Studios, we're looking at it. You can't really see it because of the trees, but between that and the house, there is a place called a paddock, which you were sleeping, so I had to look it up. The, a paddock is basically a plot section, a plot of land where they would keep animals. And on the other side of this fence, we're gonna show you is where the paddock was. There's really no pictures of them building the church. Just a few behind the scenes stuff, but I'm gonna show it to you. And I'm gonna show you where we think they built the church. So like I said, the front door is on the back side of the building and it actually faces the car park. Now, if you were to walk across the car park, you're gonna see a fence. And on the other side of those trees, there's a little open spot. So we're gonna walk over there and just kind of peek over the fence. The wind is really starting to pick up, but you know what, I think it's quite fitting. It's funny, even though they build a church, there is a church-like structure with a steeple and a clock right here on property. But that's not the one. Not really gonna be able to see much of anything on the other side of this because it's grown so much. But if we come down here, we get a really cool little shot. So you can see the buildings way through the trees there. That's a sound stage, right about the center of your screen. They have filmed so many things over there. They still film stuff. Uh, the old Hammer Studios, all those different movies like Dracula, uh, not the Bela Lugosi Dracula, the Hammer movies. But somewhere back here, I do believe facing the trees, facing us, is where they they built the church because you can see like a lamppost off in the distance. I do believe that was a part of the studios, but you can also see a fence and it's, it's back here somewhere. There's absolutely no way of knowing where exactly, but nobody really talks about it. So yeah, right across the street here is Bray Studios. And sadly we can't get any closer than this. We, we reached out to them to see if we can get on property to see if we can show anything, but this is as close as we're gonna get. Now you see the tree line off in the distance, right on the other side of that is Oakley Court where they filmed the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So it's really, really close, but there's one thing I really wanna point out. All along this road that runs right up against Bray Studios and Oakley Court are all these different lamp posts, and they look almost identical to the one that can be seen just beyond the billboard during the wedding scene. This has got to be it. All right, baby ghoul. You ready to walk the Rocky Horror Picture Show? <laughs> All right. Let's do this. We decided to walk up to the front gate to see if anything matches up to the movie, with, especially with Brad and Janet driving back to the house. And we found this. Now Jessica's standing right next to a gate that says Oakley and on the other side it says court. Well, what I mean by that, there's Oakley right there. And if I turn and I look over this way, this gate says court. Now, if you were to shut both gates, all right, bear with me, this is gonna blow your mind. When Brad and Janet walk up to the gates to Frankenfurter's mansion, there is a sign that says enter at your own risk and pay close attention to the gates because they're the same exact gates from the movie. In fact, the sign was posted pretty much right here. Like, I got goosebumps. This blows my mind. There are a point there that 
you got a little emotional looking at the gates. I thought you were gonna start crying. You know, I, I, I was this close. Like when we walked through the house, the owners, uh, the people who run the hotel gave us a tour and I was just about losing my gourd. And uh, I can't wait to take you guys inside. Now, you ready for this baby girl? Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you this, but I have a surprise. And I feel like now's the great time to tell you about it. This video is gonna be the first ever Grim Life Collective musical. We're singing from here on out. Okay. <laughs> I can carry a tune, how about you? I've not, well, we've been married for what? 75 years <laughs> now? Almost seven. Almost seven, I yeah. know. And I have yet to sing for you. I used to sing whenever I was growing mm -hmm. up and, and Rocky Horror Picture Show was I've one of my favorites. I've never heard him. I, I, I'll you were like, in Rocky Horror Picture Show. I was, show. I was in Pittsburgh at the Hollywood Theater. I was one of the, uh, the oh, what are they called, shadow casters? I was one of the Transylvanians for a little bit and I even got to play Brad. So, he doesn't sing for boom. me, but maybe he'll sing for you. I was kidding, there's not gonna be a musical. Onward we go. So we know a few different things. They know that they filmed inside Oakley Court inside and outside, back whenever it was a derelict in, uh, mansion in disrepair, if you will. We know now that they filmed the gate. The gate is still here. So it only makes sense that they would film the driving scenes leading up to the mansion. And this is the only road that goes in there and it's slightly winding. They had to have filmed here, they had to have. I don't know for certain, but they had to have. Right after the gate scene, we see Susan Sarandon, Janet, coming out from behind a tree just like this with a newspaper over her head. It's raining and she's singing and she's ducking the branches. The branches have been cut back, but this is the tree. And we know this because directly behind her, real quick, you see that there's another tree really close to her. And she sings and Brad joins her and they walk their way to the castle. I can't believe we're doing this. They make their way to this tree right here. And we get a little bit of happiness. They, they found a light at the end of the tunnel. And off in the distance, you see the Transylvanians riding their motorcycles right down that path, right between them, and they, they separate. And then we get another song. And we're just gonna point this out real quick. You can see the tree right there, this tree, and you can see that little path. You can just imagine the Transylvanians riding their motorcycles right towards where I'm standing. As the Transylvanians ride up to the mansion, we get a shot from right about here, and then it zooms in to the window with Riff Raff Looking out the window, there's a light on him and he sings, and that is our bedroom. And you know what I have to do, right? What every Rocky Horror Picture Show fan wants to do. So in the movie, Riff Raff is seen right here in this window, just like this. There's a curtain just like this here. But he does this song looking out the window, there's a light on him in the darkness, and he's watching as Brad and Janet and the Transylvanians make it to the castle. No, I'm not going to sing, as tempting as it is, but not on camera. I did sing, but not on camera. And that brings us once again to the front of the building, which is actually the back side of the building. But in the movie, it looks like it's the front. This is where Brad and Janet first knock on the door and they meet Riff Raff. And I always got a kick out of this. I call them the Scooby-Doo gargoyles, but they are actually griffins. They are still here. There's a lot of things to match up. This, oh my God, like, God, help me Lord, help me. <laughs> we can run this side over here, right? They're beautiful. All right, let's line up some iconic shots. Baby goal, I can't believe it's not like we're standing here at the entrance to Frank Converter's house, the mansion itself. Now in this scene, Brad and Janet, you're playing both, are standing pretty much right where Jessica is. You can see the Griffin, I'm sorry, the Scooby-Doo gargoyle right behind on the other side of Brad. And Janet, if you followed 
the Rakira picture show live action thing, it looks like she's wearing a condom in her hair, but it's this weird circular barrette. And Brad reaches out and presses the doorbell. It has a very interesting sound to it. Now the doorbell doesn't work, but it's still here. Now pay close attention to that, as well as I'm gonna back up so you can take it all in again. Pay attention to the chain around the griffin's neck. Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. I just go back. I'm cold and I'm frightened. Just a moment, Janet. They may have a phone. And then Riff Raff, like the coolest greeting ever, opens the door. Hello. Now Riff Raff answers the door. Something very similar to this. He's a strange fella and he says something along the lines of, Yeah. You're wet. Perhaps you'd both had better come inside. And the best part about this, it really hasn't changed. The door is the place where his hands were. And then if you look behind me, you can see the, the windows, the stained glass is gone, but the glass is still there. How freaking amazing is this? Now, real quickly before we go inside, I wanna point this out. Jessica just noticed that yes, they changed the windows here in the door, but the stained glass that is no longer here, it's actually still here. All you gotta do is look up. Remember how we always say things like, look up, you're gonna miss a lot of stuff? It's the same stained glass from the movie. It's still here in the doorway, just, you know, slightly different. It's up there instead of down below. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, the Transylvanians. While this conversation is happening right here on the front step, there's a flash of lightning and we get a shot of the Transylvanians motorcycles parked right behind Jessica in a line, right where those tree beds are. Now in this scene, pay close attention to this little filigree, whatever you want to call it, to the left. This is the exact spot, man. I think I'm like a little kid in a candy store over here. Riff Raff follows Brad and Janet into the house, and this is the shot that we get of the main room with the staircase. It is beyond beautiful. Talk about mind blown. And the staircase, it's original to the house. It's still here. It just looks beyond beautiful. Like, oh my freaking word. And you could just, you, you could just see the movie. You can feel the movie. This is also where we get that, that amazing line where Brad says it must be a hunting lodge for rich weirdos, but nope, it's Frankenfurter's house. Uh, it's probably some kind of hunting lodge for rich weirdos. <laughs> now, speaking of staircases, Magenta can be seen coming down this staircase, just like Jessica. Well, in the movie, Magenta slides down and she says, you're lucky, I'm lucky, we're all lucky. And she throws the duster to Riff Raff now, before we walk around the room, pay close attention to the wrought iron work here. It's all still the same. You're lucky. He's lucky. I'm lucky. We're all lucky. <laughs> Crazy, right? Now, with the dust buster in hand, Riff Raff comes over here. This entire time they're singing the song. It's the time warp, right? And he comes over here, and this is where the clock was. The clock was standing right here. There used to be this like skeleton clock. It was a, a coffin. Aficionados of the, the movie will understand that this is not the same clock, but it's nice to know that they put a clock here. The clock we had had a skull on the front of it, inside a skeleton, complete skeleton. I pressed a button, the door came, came open, and the, this, this started. I'd like to sing a song now that's been very good to me. It's astounding, time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll, but listen close. And then they make their way Not over to this room. Long. This is where the lift was. Oh, I have got to. It's a nice little bar area now. And then at the very end of the song, this room right over here in the center of your screen, the doors were shut. This is where they burst open the doors. And this is where the time warp officially happens. It's the room, but it's not the room. It's not, that entire scene was not filmed here at the house. It was actually filmed down the street at Bray Studios. 
but it's gorgeous, right? Definitely not big enough. It was almost like a theater room. Now let's step into the lift room once again. This time we're gonna look up at the ceiling. Pay close attention to it because, you ready for it? It's still the same ceiling. Now here's a little movie magic for you. That centerpiece wasn't here whenever they made Rocky Horror Picture Show. There was a lift, it was a fake lift. They had some hydraulics on it so it would work. But there is an interview uh, with Richard O'Brien where he's talking about this room and he says that it was kind of like a, like a gallery up there. Like it was almost like a catwalk. Uh, I'm gonna take you up there, you're gonna see more what I mean. But they filled it in, that lift was gone, they completely removed it. Pat Quinn came down from the stairs. We did, I ran around, there used to be a big, big lift in the middle of the building here. It was only a pretend lift, it had a hydraulic on it, and it went up this roof, what the roof upstairs up here wasn't there. There was a minstrel gallery all around here. And above that again, there was leaded lights for the rain coming through. And I ran around the lift and then Pat and I did the old Transylvanian kind of salute to one another. And then we raced along here, crashed these doors open. And at that point, we cut to the set over in the studio. And there are all the Transylvanians going, let's do the time warp again. It was very exciting. When it comes to the lift room, the ceiling isn't the only part that still looks the same. Now, that lift, it used to be right in the middle, pretty much right where Jessica's standing. That is long gone. But this is gonna blow your mind. I mean, if this video hasn't blown your mind yet, I don't know what will. It's kind of dark in here, but you can see these shelving units. There's one here, and then there's also one over on the other side of the bar. Get over this way so you can see it. See it? You can see this in this room as Riff Raff dances throughout it. Right now, we're walking through the Time Warp room where they did the dance. And like I said, it wasn't filmed here. It was actually filmed on a set. But if we come over here and you look at the doors, it's the same design, the same pattern. There's a scene where Brad and Janet are standing right in front of these doors. Let's see if we can go ahead and recreate it. Even though they didn't film inside this room, they did one heck of a job at recreating these doors and the trim around it. I mean, you can just picture Riff Raff and Brad and Janet and Magenta standing in front of it singing, oh my God, I'm not gonna lie, baby girl. I really wish that we chose to do this as a musical. It would be amazing. We gotta come back here at some point with friends and just have a party. There's one more room here on the first floor that they used for the movie, and that's this room right here. It's a dining room, and in the movie, this is also the dining room. In fact, right in the center here, right about there, is where Eddie was in the coffin. They were getting ready to eat Eddie. We were introduced to the dining room scene in a shot very similar to this with Magenta and Riff Raff bringing the food into the dining room. And immediately, my very first thought is this, I think that is the same exact chandelier hanging there. Now also, aside from that, now keep in mind, this room is dark. You can see the chandelier and there's a couple different scenes where while they're eating, you can see this fireplace to the right. Two telltale signs that we are in the right spot. Excuse me. Now we're gonna head up to the second floor because they did film up here as well. Now we are staying actually, I think technically it's the third floor which is Riff Raff's room. We're gonna show you guys that a little bit later on. But this is the second floor where the lift was, where Brad, during the chase scene right after dinner, Brad takes the lift and <laughs> they have a little run in up here. It's kind of comical. And this is, I'm get, you know what I'm getting, baby girl? I'm getting uh, Rose Red vibes whenever we stayed at the, the mansion for that, the castle, Thornwood Castle. All right, let's line up shots here on the second floor. This is the scene where you get Frankenfurter chasing Janet up the steps and they have this little 
cat and mouse game down there on the landing and she ends up kneeing him in the crotch. All happened right here. There's this weird taxidermy fox or whatever it was to the left side of the screen. I'm gonna try to do this all in one long shot. And when I do this, pay close attention to the layout of the room, the doors, the door frames. Now in this scene, Frankenfurter is chasing Janet around the room and you can see a banister. That's the banister for the gallery, the lift. It's no longer here. It's completely gone. They filled in the floor. But this, this is blowing my mind. So they run around the banister and right over here are steps. And he chases her right up the steps. And this actually goes up to our room or the riffraff room. We get another scene up here. And that's pretty much it. The last shot inside this house is pretty much in the same exact spot where we were standing when we were pointing the camera down to the landing whenever Janet needs Frankenfurter in the crotch. This time we're pointing at the stairs going upstairs. You can see him chasing her up the stairs just like this. Now, baby ghoul, there are all kinds of different theories online. People say that the lift was fake, that they brought it in. Some people say that it was part of the house, it just wasn't working. There's two different theories. Now, you just discovered something that's going to prove that it was a real lift. Just broken. Just broken. You guys ready for it? So if you watch this scene very, very carefully, very slowly, and you, you slow it down or pause it in just the right spot, you're going to see these two buttons. You see what it says? The one on the left says up, and the one on the right says down. So at one point, there was a working lift here in the house. How maddening is that? And then from there, once they get to the top of the stairs, they enter into Frank's laboratory. And this brings another little interesting story. You see, when it comes to set pieces and different props from Rocky Horror Picture Show, they're one of the most sought after items because it's such a cult classic. And for years, people were wondering what happened to the tank that Rocky was in. Now, in doing research for this video, I found a couple of different pictures that for years they were lost and somebody found them in the dumpster behind Bray Studios. And here's some pictures that I found, uh, only two of them. I'm sure there are collectors out there and don't get me wrong, I'd love to have a piece of you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show history, but in case I never do, at least we got to spend the night in Frankenfurter's castle. I know what you all have been waiting for. You guys want to see Riff Raff's room, right? Well, if you decide to come to Oakley Court and you want to stay in Riff Raff's room, the room number is 114. And it's up here on the top floor. And we have all the lights on, but excuse our mess. The door's already propped. But this is your room. And it is gorgeous. Now, <laughs> just picture, all right? Just take away how gorgeous this is. Whenever you heard, whenever you hear stories about them making Rocky Horror Picture Show, they said that while they were filming, the roof was leaking. So water was pouring down from the roof down on them the entire time. So much so that Susan Sarandon, the very first day that she was filming, she got pneumonia because there was so much water and it was so cold. But just picture, Riff Raff, Richard O'Brien, in this room before it looked like this. Standing over here. <laughs> oh, singing. This window right there on the right. Now it's nighttime, of course, so there's really no point pointing the camera outside, but this is where he would have been sitting, right here. Uh, it blows my mind. Right here in front of this window, just like this, with a light shining up on him was Riff Raff. I just, I'm, I'm so giddy, I just can't get over it. Jessica's making fun of me. She's calling it the Grim Life Geek Out, and that's okay, because you kind of have to whenever you do these things. Now, right over here, there's a little hallway with some uh, closets, but it turns right into the bathroom. One of the nicest hotels we've ever stayed in. Well, considering that 
the way that this place used to look. And it went in here and they completely revamped it. There I am. <laughs> right? This is hot. Both Jessica and I got a kick out of this. It's a towel warmer. And this is our second hotel that we've been in that had one of these. And basically, you know, whenever you take a shower, you wash your face, you get a towel, it's wet. Put it on there and it dries you for it. No more wet towels, or at least it keeps it warm so when you get out of the shower. But it is hot. Definitely haven't stayed in a place that has one of these, except for here in England. I'll wait till you guys get a load of this one. There's no TV, or is there? So over here, we got the remote, and then we have another remote for this. And I feel like there should be music playing. We need something like this in our house. Baby, I don't know how, we gotta build an, a, a TV lift. They call these, they don't call them elevators in England, they call them lifts. This is a television lift. They have booze here and some reading material if we wanted, but they have a picnic basket over here and they said that anything that's in the picnic basket is complimentary and there's all kinds of stuff here. I haven't touched any of it. Look how neat that is. I will say this, as soon as we got here, right here on this, on this uh, plate, you read what it says? Chocolate chip cookie. Contains gluten, dairy, and soya. Fresh milk in the fridge, they have milk here. So the very first thing I did as soon as we walked in here, I ate both cookies. And of course, there's tea. And all kinds of different way to, ways to make your tea. Oh, and check this out. What is this? Water, yeah. Um, water and soda here in England comes in a glass jar or a glass bottle. And you know what? Speaking of milk and drinks coming in glass jars, whenever we were in Canada, we found it a little interesting that there, when you get milk, it comes in a bag. So things are done differently no matter where you go and we're here for that. All right, baby girl, you ready to call it a night? Lay in bed and watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show in the castle from the Rocky Horror Picture Show? All right, let's do it. All right, baby. This is it. Let me get over quick. On our feet. Every time I watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I want to like call back the uh, the sayings. I'm a virgin. <laughs> right? I you've, don't know the saying. You've never seen it like live. Not in theater, no. Oh, we have to change that. You know what? If there's ever a chance to see it here in England live, we need to. Where? Thank you. And with that, we're gonna leave you for tonight. Have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Maybe we'll do a little tour around the grounds. At the very least, we'll do our closing. But for now, we're gonna watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show at Frankenfurter's Castle in Transylvania. Ha uh ha. -huh. Mm. Well, we did it, baby ghoul. We survived a night over at the Frankenstein place. Never thought in a million years that we'd ever get to stay at a place like this. I mean, how many times do we say that? And YouTube has been really, really good to us. Now, before we leave, we want to do a few different things that are kind of on the bucket list for every Rocky Horror Picture Show fan. And uh, hope you're ready, because I'm not sure if I am. This is our morning shot of the castle. And just look at that fountain. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of don't want to leave, but we have so much to see. So we got the shot of me in the same window of Riff Raff whenever he's singing the song. Now there's one other thing that I feel like every Rocky Horror Picture Show super fan needs to do, and that's the time warp in the room where they did the time warp. Now again, they didn't film it in this one room in particular. They actually built a set for it over at Bray Studios. But since this is the room that they come in and it's technically floor plan wise, we gotta do it here. 
in this room where they did the time warp, they have a record player. And we were really hoping that there was a Rocky Horror Picture Show vinyl here. Sadly, there's not. It's a missed opportunity. But they have things like this. We already went through looking. Got Susie and the Banshees. Come on, we were in England. Susie and the Banshees is a must. We got Billie Holiday. The Talking Heads. And Johnny Cash. And sadly, no Rocky Horror Picture Show. But it's not going to stop us from doing the time warp. All right, baby goal. Even though this is not the room that they filmed the time warp scene in, they, they built it on the set. The door matches up like we said. Now, you're going to be Janet. You're standing pretty much right where she was. I'm Brad. This is not where they danced. This is just when they enter the room. Do you remember how to do the time warp? <laughs> well, this is a jump to the left and then a step to the right. Put your hands on your hips and lock your knees in tight. It's just a pelvic thrust <laughs> and everything is insane. <laughs> Let's do the time warp again. <laughs> Let's do the time warp again. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. With the amount of film history that was done here, like the old Hammer movies and Rocky Horror Picture Show, I'm actually a little surprised that there's nothing on the walls. I mean, can you imagine walking through some of the scenes and there's framed pictures of behind the scenes shots of where they were filmed? It's kind of like a missed opportunity. They do have a gift shop, but there's nothing in there for Rocky Horror or the old movies that were filmed here. However, the people who run this place, they are very open to fans coming here and taking pictures and doing video. In fact, once a year, there's a group of Rocky Horror Picture Show fans that come here, they play the movie, they dress up, and they reenact certain things. I can see us coming back here in the future for sure. I mean, come on, let's do the time warp again. I would. The grounds here, they are massive. I mean, you pretty much have free reign to walk wherever you want. They have restaurants, they have activities, and on the weekends, they have a Stonehenge, uh, what do you call it, like a blow-up bouncy castle? I mean, it's massive. But one thing that's really, really cool is you can actually walk down to the river. They have a couple different paths and docks and a couple different boats that you can actually rent. So that's what we're going to do right now. It's just the whole experience. On cold nights, they have a like, fire pit. Man. Beautiful morning. There's planes overhead. It's a beautiful morning. What do you think, baby ghoul? Would you stay here again? It's beautiful, right? Definitely wasn't expecting this. I'm glad that there's somebody here taking care of this place. And it just wasn't left to ruin, you know? And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to Oakley Court where they filmed the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And as always, until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, it's gone from my way, wherever I go, hard luck is dead in state. Good luck never stays a day, a bad luck's always coming my way.